So I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. Um, this is a truly exciting moment for me. Um, this has been a few years in the making. Uh, the Indiana ISAC, which is the Indiana Information Sharing and Advisory, um, wow, <laughs> numbed out, right? Uh, advisory Center. Um, it's, uh, it's huge, it's, it's something that I've got my heart in. And uh, as, as some of you may already know, um, I'm gonna be leaving the state here very shortly. Uh, my successor is here today. I'd like to kind of point him out, Dewan Neely, who's going to be taking the uh, the reins from me. And so uh, uh, he's got a he's got a lot of great things on his mind, and I know he's going to continue with the stuff we've we've already uh, begun. So I, I, I kind of wanted to point that out first and just say so I'm excited that I've been able to uh, be here today with all these great people um, to launch this center. So let me tell you a little bit about why this is important to the state of Indiana. Um, this facility is going to provide for us to better watch everything that's going on in state government to ensure we're protected from the threats today. Um, you just have to watch the news every night to see that someone else has had a breach, a hack, um, a data loss. Uh, the challenges are out there and they keep growing. We are attacked more today than we ever have been and every day that threat continues to grow. So what did we want to do about that? We wanted to try and leverage public and private and academia to try and solve that problem, right? Try and give us an opportunity to better defend ourselves and protect our state, not just the public sector, but the private as well. So we need to work together to do that. So what really is exciting about this is we're leveraging the next generation, the youth of Indiana, to help us do that with staff from the state offices and Indiana students from Purdue University Pathmaker Program who are gonna be protecting us every day and making sure we don't miss that one attack that could potentially compromise information for the constituents of Indiana. So with that, I'm extremely excited to talk a little bit more about the, uh, um, what we're doing here and how they're gonna help. Um, and as well as the other folks up here today who are gonna talk a little bit about each area. So this is critically important. Um, I can't say that enough. You guys will see it in the tour afterward. Um, where you're going to see the opportunity to see kind of a little bit of what they do um, and the sort of gauges they watch. There's nothing confidential up there, um, so don't, don't worry about that. And there'll be a Q&A session so I can answer your questions um, in detail about what you might want to know about the facility. So uh, with that, I'm actually thrilled to introduce our first speaker. Rick Echeverria is the Vice President of the Intel Security Group and he's the general manager of the Intel Security Platform and Solutions Division for Intel Corporation. He's leading Intel's efforts to transform security across the computing landscape over the course of his more than 20 year career with Intel. Echeverria has provided leadership and innovation to Intel across hardware and software engineering, product line management, new business development, sales and marketing, and strategic business planning and management. Prior to joining Intel, Echeverria was a software developer for IBM. He received his bachelor's degree in industrial engineering from Purdue University, boiler up, and his yeah. master's degree uh, in computer systems management from Union College. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, Paul. Uh, I am honored to be here, and I'll drop the grid, representing uh, Intel and Intel Security in the next chapter of our collaboration with the state of Indiana and with Purdue University. And that collaboration has two major elements, the technology and the know-how that we are going to share and integrate into this extension of the state of Indiana's ISAC, as well as Intel's official engagement, I know that I owe this to Jerry, been after this for a while, in the Pathmaker program. Intel has a history of collaborating with the state of Indiana, and I have to tell you, as a, as a proud Purdue alum, I landed here from Puerto Rico back in, uh, well, many years ago, I won't tell you when. <laughs> uh, and it, it, uh, it always amazes me and impresses me how uh, the state of Indiana and Purdue University are willing to proactively engage and address some of the biggest issues that we face today. And cybersecurity is one of the biggest challenges that we're facing uh, at the global level and at the technology level. And it's all happening here in Indiana, so I'm very proud to be associated with this. Uh, our collaboration in the past, um, both with the uh, CIO as well as with Purdue, spans quite the gamut in technology. 
We, uh, Paul and I were talking about a few years ago when we introduced uh, personal computing technology, the latest generation, and the state of Indiana, probably one of the first states to deploy this technology in order to drive efficiency into the operations of the state. Hardly ever hear governments think that way, I have to say, right? It's great to hear the words efficiency uh, and the ap application of technology this way. And then with Jerry, we, we've done quite a bit of work. Uh, we're especially proud of the work we've done in high performance computing with Jerry's office at Purdue. Uh, Purdue has been as well recognized both nationally and globally for uh, the advanced application development that it's doing because of, of the cluster and the high performance technology that uh, Jerry and his team have deployed. So we've got a history here of great technology collaboration. We're extending that to a very important area in cybersecurity. And um, at Purdue, one of the things that we, that we learn and it's ingrained in us is the focus on outcomes. At the end of the day, we're collaborating here and we're integrating our technology and our people because we want to achieve a certain number of outcomes. And if you look at Intel security, uh, we primarily focus on three outcomes. And that's the protection, uh, the detection, and the recovery from these cyber threats. And we try to do it in the most efficient way possible. When it comes to the collaboration here uh, with the state of Indiana and Purdue, uh, we're going to focus in three areas. First, we're going to serve the state by sharing information about threats. We have somewhere in the range of 200 million nodes that are feeding us information on a daily basis. We want to share that information with the state, and we also want to collaborate with the state on cybersecurity strategies. So that's the first part of the collaboration. The second part of the collaboration is very important. It's about the human capital. And what we intend to do is support, not only with our people, but with the cyber analysts that, uh, that the state is going to have run the operations of the center. And we want to arm those uh, cyber analysts with technology know-how and access to the global experts at Intel Security. The third part of the collaboration um, is where Purdue University comes into play, and that's Intel's commitment to being part of the Pathmaker program. And we're going to work very closely uh, with Steve Elliott in the Biometric Research Lab and with Jerry's team. And that collaboration will serve actually three purposes. First, uh, the area of biometrics and identity is very important to us and to the industry. So we're going to collaborate with the Biometrics Research Lab uh, and put together a research agenda around biometrics and identity types of technologies. Uh, second, we're very excited about starting to build a pipeline of cyber savvy professionals. Uh, the supply and demand in cybersecurity, as many of you have read, is totally uh, out of whack. So we're very excited to be able to build the skill at Purdue and then tap into, uh, as Intel Security and Intel tap into that resource as they graduate and hopefully choose careers at this great company called Intel Corporation. Um, and last but not least, we love the fact that Purdue has global scale that Purdue has a great collaboration model with other institutions. So as a result of the work we do here and part of Intel's role in making the world a better place, we intend to use that scale to raise the bar for cybersecurity across the industry. So it's a final thought. Intel security is committed to being the state of Indiana's and Purdue University's best security partner. And we look forward to delivering the right outcomes as a result of this great collaboration with the right level of technology people in support of the state, uh, the government agencies, local businesses, and ultimately the residents of this great state of Indiana. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Um, we're really excited about this partnership and, and want to continue to grow it. So with that, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, um, the Vice President for Information Technology and Systems Chief Information Officer, Jerry McCartney. Jerry has served Purdue University's Chief Information Officer since July 2007. In 2013, his role was expanded to include responsibility for the Office of Institutional Research and oversight of uh, information technology at the regional as well as Le West Lafayette campuses. Under McCartney's leadership, Purdue has developed the nation's largest cyber infrastructure for research with six supercomputers listed in the internationally known Top 500 list. Also during his tenure, Purdue has developed some of the nation's most advanced learning and classroom technologies, including signals and hot seat. As system CIO, McCartney is responsible for the management of Purdue data and IT resources at the West Lafayette, Calumet, North Central, and Fort Wayne campuses. With that, I'd like to introduce Jerry McCartney.
just broke it. It sure is. They had to make it shorter for me, Jerry. There we go. <laughs> Good afternoon. And on behalf of President Mitch Daniels and a Purdue Research Foundation President and CEO Dan Hassler, Rick, Paul, Lieutenant Governor Al Elsperman, and guests, welcome to Purdue. This is an exciting day because of what it means for, for the Purdue Pathmaker Internship Program, for Purdue University, and for our great state of Indiana. The new Indiana Security Operations Center is one of the best examples of the promise and delivery of what it means to be a land-grant university. It's appropriate that Rick is here representing Intel because the Purdue Pathmaker Internship Program began with a conversation I had a couple of years ago with an Intel senior vice president. And he was asking me, uh, uh, asking me because he had, as he described, work and requisitions for 350 engineers. And could he hire them from Purdue? And I, sure, we love to do that, you know. Uh, you get your corporate HR people lined up with our <coughs> career center people, and you know, in 18 months we can get this knocked over. And he replied, I was thinking more like Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I began thinking that we have the students who can do that type of work right here on campus, who not only would be eager to do this type of engineering work, like testing, benchmarking hardware, software development, but who would benefit greatly from that experience. We began Pathmaker just two years ago, and although it's still in its pilot phase, it's already successful, and it's easy to understand why. In eight of the last 10 years, Purdue has produced more graduates with degrees in engineering and engineering-related fields, as defined by the US Department of Education, than any other university in the nation. When you combine this nation-leading depth of talent with nation-leading programs in computer science through our Purdue Polytechnic, cyber forensics, and security, you understand why some of the nation's leading technology companies are eager to set up internship programs right here in West Lafayette. Perhaps no area right now needs skilled workers more than cybersecurity. As other people have already said, recent reports say that at least 90% of large corporations and three-fourths of small organizations have been the victims of cyber attacks or intrusions. Our state institutions, likewise, have to have the ability to not only repel, but also to respond to these attacks. This threat not only affects our state agencies, but potentially even our own personal security and safety. The new Indiana Security Operations Center upstairs will make Indiana safer, while also educating and benefiting Purdue students. As I said earlier, this effort exemplifies the promise of Purdue and the land-grant system. I want to offer my congratulations to Paul, who certainly championed this CIO for the state of Indiana. Ted Stahl and Hans Vargas, also of the office, Indiana Office of Technology. Dewan Neely, who will become a new and very valued colleague. To Greg Hedrick, Purdue's Chief Information Security Officer. And Diana Hancock, the Director of Commercialization in my office. To Rick Echeverria. Vice President at Intel and his staff, including Terry Tarr, Senior Account Manager at Intel Security. I want to thank them all for taking this three-way partnership, this novel three-way partnership, from just another nice idea to a functioning operations center. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Jerry, and I, I, I do want to say um, we couldn't have done this without the fantastic Purdue staff from Jerry and his entire team. Um, they've made this possible. So with that, I want to lead to our next speaker, and I, I could read the bio, but I really would like to just kind of talk about a little personal note here. 
Um, I've worked with the Lieutenant Governor since the beginning of the administration, um, and it's been a privilege and a pleasure. Um, she's one of the most fantastic government servants I've known and generally nicest people that, I, that I've dealt with, right? She's, she's always positive and she always finds a way to, to make a success out of everything. Um, one of the great things we worked on prior to this was uh, a rural broadband issue. And I, I grew up in southern Indiana and cornfields are the norm there. And gosh, when I was a kid, I remember to get more than three channels. We had a satellite dish so big that we needed some engineers from Purdue to, to make it work, right? So um, she wanted to take that challenge on of, of increasing rural broadband connectivity for those, for those kids and for the adults there uh, who have businesses and try and grow them. And she brought together folks from government, local and state, academia, uh, business, utilities, to find some solutions that we could all work together on and all agree on. And out of that, we've passed legislation in the last session to help grow that and make broadband ready cities, you know, something we didn't have before. Um, and, and that's the kind of leadership that Indiana needs. And she's proven um, a fantastic advocate in that area as well as in cybersecurity. We couldn't have done this without her. So with that, I want to um, thank her for the time. I've been privileged to work with her and uh, introduce Lieutenant Governor Sue Elsperman. Let's see what we're going to do here. Jerry, I don't know what you did with this. It's really broke. Uh, but I, I'm short enough, so it's really going to be okay. Thank you, Paul. Those were very kind words. And uh, being a boiler maker, too, I have a very vested interest in what comes out of this uh, endeavor. I think I'm going to maybe. How about that? We'll do something with it. We'll hold it here. So. Paul has been such a big part of our team at the state for uh, a long time as well. And Paul, we are going to miss you. Uh, we've had great, as you shared some of our stories together, we have appreciated everything you've done with IoT as our CIO and can't wait for Dwayne Neely to come take the reins. But Indiana is blessed with great leadership in this area, and we thank you for being such a big part of that. And certainly, as uh, my role really in interacting with this uh, forms from my statutory responsibility where I chair Indiana's Counterterrorism counter and Security Council. And there we do study what is happening in cyber. And there's probably not a meeting that goes by that we don't see some issues around cyber. And so we know this is very, very important. And a number of those partners uh, in that CTASC uh, task force, as we call it, are here in the room as well. Beyond IoT, it's our Department of Homeland Security. Would you all raise your hands? Who's from IHS? Yes, Joe, thank you so much. State police have been a part of this. We've got them represented. The Indiana National Guard, thank you, uh, General Carr. Uh, and of course, as we've talked about here um, with Purdue's big role, but it's so important that we all work well together. That's how we really make things happen. And so we appreciate how the public and private have come together on this very important endeavor. And with that Intel security, it just couldn't have, have happened. And we know we have other uh, state contractors like Rook Security in there as well. And we're very appreciative of how we're, we're doing this. And we know that we need to do more. You heard it up here from each of the speakers how this area is more challenging all the time. And as the state of Indiana, now that I'm in this role, it's understanding how much data is out there that could be compromised. You know, you think we have everything from tax returns to birth certificates from driver's licenses to Medicaid applications. And then as an employer, we have over 25,000 employees in the state. So a lot of data that really needs to be stewarded well. And we know that the bad guys out there are getting smarter, more creative every day. We've got, on the other hand, a better idea because we think we've got smarter young men, young women who can come in here and be the good guys and the good gals uh, to really move this forward in a good way. And so I really, really thank Purdue for being willing to lead here. And I say, as much as I'm so excited about what this is going to do in cyber, I'm excited for the opportunities for these students. I'm a big fan of internships. I was a co-op here at Purdue back in the days as an engineer, so I understand how getting your hands 
uh, dirty and in the, in the field that you're going to explore, what this will do to the careers of our young people, attract many, many more into Purdue Pathways and into these kind of programs that are in such high demand. I think, Rick, you told me a million and a half people in the next maybe 10 years or so will be needed in cybersecurity and all those related professions. So this is a very important endeavor for that as well. And so I just thank all of the partners that have been part of this. I know the state's going to be the great beneficiary, and that means every Hoosier. Every Hoosier will benefit from the work that's done here. And for the students who are going to be in there, you can work for Intel Security, but we hope it's going to be in the state of Indiana. So we do. I'm just just saying, Rick. I'm gonna we're gonna put up a good fight to keep them here. That just might mean Intel Security needs a bigger presence in Indiana. That would be that would be a win-win. We call that a win-win. So anyway, we we appreciate what's happened here. This is tremendous. It bodes well for the state of Indiana. It's a great credit to Purdue. A great credit to all of our partners, and we we are just pleased to be um, one of the first states to try something so aggressive and proactive in this area. So thank you all for being a part of it. Can't wait for the tour. Thank you. Um, so with that, I will uh, take some questions if anyone has questions from a technical or other perspective. Do we have any questions? No? That everybody wants to see it, yes. So um, we're going to be arranging a tour, so we'll do a, a walkthrough. The space is not extremely large, um, so we'll, we'll probably want to take folks through um, out the door here in uh, kind of a single file fashion. Um, so if you'll follow right out there, Greg Lubson, our communications director, is right there, and he'll kind of direct people for the, for the opportunity to see the center.